I'm Mark Upton and welcome to this presentation on some examples of visualisation of data in sport uh, as part of the Observing and Analysing Performance in Sport open online course that hopefully everyone is enjoying and, and getting a bit out of. So um, the idea of uh, this presentation and this um, section of the module is to provide some examples that I've used or come across myself uh, in my time in sport um, but it's more about just providing a stimulus um, and to get you thinking about ways visualisations can be used and what might be effective because uh, what I'm really after next or what we're after is for you guys to contribute your examples of what has worked well, um, if you've got examples that you can contribute or even just your thoughts and ideas about what you think would work well in the coaching process or to help the coaching process. And I'll admit that um, my background is in Australian rules football, um, so that's obviously a team sport and I've probably researched other team sports to a lot greater extent than individual sports. Um, so there's certainly a bias in this presentation towards that. but. As I said, I see that as an opportunity for others to contribute some good examples from more individual type sports as well. So I thought it might be helpful just to think about this question here uh, so that as we go through the examples, you can keep uh, drawing back to this definition uh, or quote about visualisation. Um, I apologise, I can't remember where I got the link from and, and this actually originated from, but uh, yeah, it gives, a, I think, a reasonable definition of visualisation. There could be some arguments there, that's fair enough. Um, and I've just highlighted perhaps what some of the key words and terms are there, as I said, to compare and keep drawing back to as, you, as we go through some of these examples and as you provide um, your own examples as well to s consider if they achieve some of these things that are highlighted in blue. So as I was going through, I... I sort of came up with uh, these five categories of uh, visualisation. It wasn't something I had in mind to, st to start with, but I just started pulling examples together. And these sort of rough five categories uh, came out. So I'll work through them um, yeah, under these categories to sort of give a bit of structure um, to what I'm presenting. And we'll start with tabular data, which this first example here is probably an example of what visualisation isn't. So <laughs> a whole lot of numbers on one page, uh, achieving probably none of those uh, highlighted terms in blue that we saw on the previous slide. Um, so this, that's an example, I guess, of what visualisation isn't and, and just tabular data and what we're trying to improve on uh, in a number of ways. And maybe the first way of doing that is still um, having data in a tabular format, but using what might be called traffic lights or stoplight um, colouring um, to achieve some visual effects. So it's obviously universal almost, the understanding of green, amber, red, green being being a positive or really good, amber okay, red poor, that's, that's well understood, and using that to um, draw the eye to um, some of the results. So this is an example in AFL of uh, a report we could produce straight after the game. This is actually out of Sports Code, um, where the front page here, summary page, on some of our offense, defense, and stoppages uh, rating. Stoppages in AFL, because I might refer to them a few times, stoppages are like restarts in play, a bit like a jump ball in basketball where the umpire will throw it up or throw it in from the boundary and teams have to compete to win the ball again. Uh, so some of those uh, key indicators there. And then the next page was into more detail into some of those as well. So using the, the traffic light um, effect, which I think worked reasonably well. I read a good piece as well about maybe at times getting away from the traffic light of uh, use and using more neutral colours. And uh, it's a really good example of when they're talking about presenting data to players uh, in terms of skill development. And they didn't want red to be a real negative connotation. So they're obviously encouraging players to improve their some of their skills. Uh, they understand that they might not be great in all of them, but they didn't want to use red as a way of highlighting some where they might be uh, weaker in some aspects. They sort of wanted to keep it as a positive tone to pr the way they present the data. So I don't know if these are the exact colours, but maybe a grey type colour represented some room for improvement. The yellow might still be neutral, maybe blue is a nice positive 
uh, colour where, where they were uh, better at some of their skills. So I thought that was a really interesting point about conveying information to players and the psychological effect you can have, I suppose. I don't know if anyone's got um, experiences in that as well. So the next step up, and again, this is probably following, um, starting from simple and building up in complexity too. So simple charts, bar charts, column charts, really good at making comparisons across data and across um, categories of data. So this one, in this case, again, on skill development, this the orange bars represent, uh, this was one of our younger players and how we'd rated him in some certain skill categories out of seven. And he's compared to the um, to the green bars represent a more experienced player. So quickly, you can just see that he's slightly under in most areas uh, compared to the experienced player. Uh, again, good visual way of quickly seeing that. Then he's just got a bit of work to do uh, to catch up to that player. Line graphs as well. Um, a couple of points on them. So this could be a you know, typical situation where round by round you're plotting a certain uh, statistic or KPI uh, and just by using a line graph you can immediately draw some information out. You can see how does our last performance or result compare to the rest of the year? What are the trends in the data? And again the red and, and green lines represent what might be above the green line might be a really good result, in between is okay, and below the red line is, is a poor result. So a bit like the traffic light effect, you can achieve the same thing here. Sometimes you can shade the background of the graph as well um, with those colours. So coaches quickly can see how do we rate, how does it compare the previous year, is it within our benchmarks or thresholds, uh, and what are any trends in the data. So there's a lot of information they can pick up really probably within three or four seconds of looking at that graph. Now it's nothing fancy, but quite effective. If we go into plots and maps, you get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So plotting data, I guess, or representing it on field and based on pitch location. So this is a soccer one, and uh, this was representing uh, passes around the, the scoring area in soccer, or around the 18 yard box and was looking at the number of passes, which is represented by the size of the bubbles. So bubbles are often another uh, thing you'll see on charts, and I think they're a really effective way of visually conveying information. I'm sure you'll agree that the size of the bubbles quick, quickly gives you a really good indication, in this case here, of how many passes were originated from each zone, and the colouring, as you can see down the bottom, completion represents the like the completion or effectiveness of those passes. So the ones a bit further out, more effective um, as well. So uh, that's one way of plotting data using some bubble examples. Another simple way is just ball movement. So AFL oval, this was looking at uh, our counter attacks out of defense in a game. So we win possession in our back third type area here, how we've moved the ball uh, through the midfield and into our attacking area. So it's reasonably corridor base. The coloured lines in this case don't represent anything, they just distinguish. So it's easy to sort of see each track of ball movement. And the one on the right uh, represents our successful entries into our attacking area or attacking third. So we had you know, the one that stands out immediately, the six into this sort of area here. Um, quite simple to see, but effective. So we've looked at some on-ball uh, visualisations. This one was one I did um, related to off-ball movement. I just uh, did it in PowerPoint. Um, and it's related to when we, if you can imagine, where the, we're heading down and we win the ball in our defence here, back here in our back third. And then as we bring the ball out of defence, I tracked what sort of runs were we making in the midfield. It's obviously easy to see here that a lot of them were lateral runs uh, towards the sideline here, which we in fact didn't want. We had a principle that what we called 45 running, so we didn't want these flat runs to the boundary. We were more after 45 running back on the diagonal to either receive the ball or to open up more space. So we used this um, visualisation with the players just to represent, rather than show a lot of video, we just used this to quickly represent, say, hey boys, we we're just running too flat. We need to, to run some better better uh, 45s, and I think it was quite effective in doing that. 
Another one to do with off ball positioning. Um, this time, imagine we're going up. So our team's going up, but we looked at when the opposition win it in our forward line, our attacking area. So now the opposition is sort of counter-attacking or bringing the ball out. In this particular game, we'd assigned a couple of players to play like a zone. And we wanted player B, who's in red, to probably more patrol this zone forward of centre to our attacking arc. And, play, and the player in blue, player A, to patrol the area from the centre to the uh, defensive arc. And certainly you can see, especially the player in blue, he did that really, really well. The red player was a bit more spread, but generally between the two of them, they, they played that system really well for that particular game. They were experienced players, uh, but did it really well. And this was some good feedback both for the coaches and for those players and for the rest of the, the squad as well about playing a certain role and doing it really well off the ball. Heat maps are becoming you know, pretty common. I'm sure everyone's seen some heat maps and how they work and highlighting certain common areas of fields or positions uh, that the ball goes through or players go through. Quite often GPS data, player tracking data is presented in this way. Uh, these days this one was one of uh, Collingwood, who's a team in the AFL. Uh, their uncontested possessions year by year. And it was it occurred to me reasonably quickly that in 2005 they had some uh, uncontested possession back in through the middle of the ground here, yet two years later, same coach, they're playing what seems obviously a different style because that has pretty much all dried up. Basketball, this was uh, just a play heat map of a player's contested shots. So obviously a lot, lot of contested around the hoop, but also took some contested ones out on the wing there and pitch frequency where, where the pitches go, left and right hand batters. Next category to look at is some dashboard uh, stuff. And again, you might be reasonably familiar with dashboards. And I suppose the definition of dashboards or what they are is really multiple visualizations on the one page or grouped together. Uh, so in this case here, multiple graphs uh, that convey different information and different categories of information all grouped together. We've still got some tabular data. Um, and this was from one of our pre-season training sessions. And, really important there's quite a lot of information here but the way we were training in pre-season obviously we're aiming to get a conditioning effect on the players particularly aerobically but we're doing a lot of game-based training so it was important that our game-based training drills small-sided games was exposing the players to the game demands or even overloading them so a lot of these measures were looking at that and so this was presented to coaching staff and to strength and conditioning physical performance staff as well who might have had different focuses of what they were looking at but is a reasonable I think uh, example of a dashboard and quite often with dashboards you can then drill down into information so they become interactive and I know um, Mark Davies, who's contributing to this module as well, has done some great examples of how you can create interactive Excel graphs and, and from drop-down menus change the um, change what the graphs display, et cetera, et cetera, and perhaps drill down into them as well. So um, by in some of the more advanced business intelligence software, you can click on you know this piece of the pie here, for example, and then it would take you into even more detailed information. And another drill down approach, rather than drilling down into more data or tables or charts, is to drill down actually into video. So actually having data linked to video. And I think more and more software will have the capability to do that now. So often you've got the numerical results or you've got the visualization, but as a coach that only tells you so much. And the video can add that context to it that you really need to get a true understanding of what the visualization is saying. So. Just in the recent release of Sports Code version 9, which uh, I think was only released about a week ago or a couple of weeks ago, they've got a new mode called Report Mode where you can use some of these traffic light effects or it could be um, having a visual of an oval or a pitch um, with colours and, and numbers on them. But all of these uh, numbers in this case are actually linked to the video. So we've coded um, from a skill development point of view different types of kicks. And so the coach or analyst can click on any of these numbers here and it will display all the link clips. Um, so in this case, kicking under high pressure effectively, it, it will bring up and play all those clips. So I think that's a really powerful feature that will continue to emerge in a lot of tools. Another way, I guess, of a form of a dashboard that's emerging is infographics. You might have heard the term. 
I couldn't find so many specific sports analysis examples, but I grabbed a couple off the web. This one's talking about the um, fantasy sports economy or market and the money and dollars that are involved in that. But it's a way of probably taking visualisation to another step where you're including a lot more images or graphics as well. And it almost starts to tell a story. And if you've read a bit about the power of storytelling for learning and for people grasping and, re and recalling concepts, you'll know that it's really powerful. And I think this starts to head along those lines. It's just with the extra use of imagery where appropriate imagery uh, can be highly effective. So, And here's just a one that explains the rules of basketball. So if you're a complete novice to the game, hadn't ever seen it before and didn't, didn't know anything about it, um, this one would give you an example or would explain some of the positions and court dimensions and a whole range. So I think it'd be good to see and great if people have got examples of this sort of infographic for doing analysis, sports analysis and analysis of performance. And finally on to the most probably complex and advanced, which I'm calling dynamic visualisations. Basically, the data's moving and what we start to get into here is a bit more about video and, for example, animation. So it's, not, it's different visualisation in that it's not necessarily collating data and, and summarising data in an easy to um, digest format but it, it still is providing some meaning. It certainly provides an understanding of pattern and relationships between players and you know, defenders and off-ball positioning. So it still, uh, I think, classifies as a form of visualisation. So I believe this is a pro zone, so the, the, players are, the animation of players moving is linked to the video here. The next evolvement from that, and some of this is getting... Uh, pretty impressive and exciting and I've turned it here they're looking like an EA Sports video game so there's software and systems now that can take uh, a camera feed here which is what this image is it's just a camera feed of a rugby game and can actually convert it into a 3D model and which means you can then fly around or take any camera perspective you like of that situation which is going to be really powerful and this now progresses probably from more as much about analysis for the coach into obviously using this with your players so it becomes a bit about uh, educating and how you and helping your players to learn uh, and understand things like time and space and what cues and decisions might exist in the environment um, and what it can do as well if you go to the slide share link that I'll have put in here put in uh, on this page or another page, you'll be able to click this link or follow this link and see an example video example of how this works, is that you can not only fly around static scenes, but this can be completely uh, animated and move if you have tracking data to combine. So if you've got XY positional data for your team and maybe the opposition, which some sports do, then you can turn your whole game into a 3D animation or EA Sports type game where the play unfolds but in this um, 3D animation effect. So it's, it's quite unbelievable really. And related to that as well in the same sort of software, uh, one of the um, software providers has termed it data augmented video. So again, this is video footage and it's automatically able to highlight uh, certain players and as the video plays it continues to automatically track these guys so in this case it's formation highlighting so the defenders positioning looks like for both teams perhaps here and the way they're shaped or structured and again as a visualization it's identifying patterns or relationships in this case positional data and again I've got a link there to see an example of that in action if you want to watch an actual video of it. So they're quite advanced systems, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, um, but probably what's certainly on the horizon now around the corner from a lot of professional sports and in time will no doubt trickle down into the next uh, semi-professional level as well. So that's certainly enough from me, but um, as I said at the start, the, the whole idea of all that was really just to stimulate your thinking because what, what we want for your benefit and for everyone's benefit is to sh be sharing examples. We've talked a lot about this course being collaborative, about sharing information uh, and learning. So the best way to do that is to provide some examples. So I've set an activity that there's a link for 
um, which hopefully you can find, that is going to allow you to submit any examples you like, or if you haven't got examples, uh, ideas and thoughts that you may have.